So let's say a child, was, want, you want a child to be able to, to read more. They have the behavior, the capability, they were taught correctly, but what about the beliefs and the values? Meaning the beliefs around that, or maybe they yes. want to, maybe they believe they're not smart enough, or maybe they don't value remembering what they're studying. Yeah. One of the reasons why children don't learn is because what does this have to do with life? life <laughs> yes, exactly. Right? Yeah. They are not curious about it ever. at all. <laughs> Exa exactly. I yeah. mean, even now as adults, you look back in high school and, and you think about what we were, what we were taught, like parallelograms. Right. Like, like instead of doing like like how to do your taxes, right? right? And you know that like there's no parallelogram season, you know, but tax season <laughs> there, there is, right? So we're not taught how to be able to do that, and so part of the the values is relevancy, uh -huh. you know, taking information that a child's learning and and showing them how they could apply it towards their life. Uh -huh. yeah. So beliefs and values, like even when we teach people how to remember names. Maybe, for example, that's the behavior, and maybe they're even taught how to remember names, but maybe they don't value remembering someone's oh, name. Yeah, or maybe they believe right. that they have a horrible memory. Mm -hmm. So all behavior is belief-driven, so yeah. that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And then the level above belief and values are this level, is this level called identity. Mm. Like, who does that child think that they are? You know, we've all heard in this community that the two most powerful words in the English language are I am. Right, because whatever word you put after that mm -hmm. is your is your life, is your, your destiny. destiny. Exactly, yeah. very much so. <laughs> and so here's the thing, let's say uh, at a behavioral level, you want your child to stop doing something. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even if you think of adult, adults, like they struggle with, oh, I wanna stop smoking, yeah. right? And maybe they, they were maybe even taught how to do it. Like they went through some mm -hmm. kind of seminar, list, some kind of podcast about it. Or, you know, maybe they have a, a belief maybe around it, but maybe the identity is I am a mm -hmm. smoker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's gonna yeah. be really difficult. Or maybe right. so you want somebody as a child to study, but mm -hmm. their identity is I'm stupid. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, and let's yeah. go deeper into these labels that can right. be really dangerous. I am dyslexic. Yeah. I have ADHD. Right. Yeah, right? I mean, this is a really big issue and a lot of times it's imposed on children in a school environment or by the parents themselves, right? Exactly. And and here's the thing, adults have to be very careful of their external words, mm -hmm. their external words because they become a child's internal words. Mm -hmm. You know, when when I was 9 years old and a teacher pointed to me in front of the class saying that's the boy with the broken brain, yeah that became my inner speech. Yeah. So every single time I did badly on a quiz, uh, which was a lot often, every time I was a pick for sports, I would always say, oh, it's because I have the broken brain. And that yeah. became my inner voice. Yeah. But here's what you wanna remember as adults and even with your children, is that your brain is like a supercomputer mm -hmm. and your self-talk is a program it will run. So mm -hmm. if you tell yourself you're not good at remembering names, you will not remember the name of the next person you meet because you program mm -hmm. your supercomputer not to. Your mind is always eavesdropping on your self-talk. Mm. Your mind is always eavesdropping on your self-talk. And so when people come to you or your child comes to you and they say, oh, I'm not a good studier or I have a horrible memory, mm -hmm. you have to remind them if you fight for your limitations, you get to keep them. Oh if you gosh. fight for your limitations, you get to keep them. Mm -hmm. If people realized how powerful their mind truly was, mm -hmm. they wouldn't say or think anything they didn't want to be true. I think a lot of relationships in general, but especially new parents kind of beat themselves up and yeah. it's not working and this is supposed to be perfect. And for us, we really, it's how we look at it. It's like, okay, cool. This is going to be an opportunity for growth. This is going to be an opportunity for us to learn more about each other, to learn more about each other's boundaries and preferences and really kind of just dive deeper into this so we can become a better foundation for our son. And that context changes the whole game mm -hmm. because if we're like resisting the communication challenges, then there's no way you can come out of that because mm -hmm. you're already making it wrong mm -hmm. versus going, ah, oh, this is interesting. We have an opportunity to grow and to learn and to really come together in a deeper way. I think what's most important in all of it is, is just stepping back into the room. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean that literally and metaphorically and energetically. Right. I think that, um, back to this idea, this fantasy standard of always getting it right and always having things working, that's gonna, ha like, things are gonna blow up. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know, Stan Tacton, he's a psychologist, he talks about how our neurobiology is actually completely connected. Mm. You know, for a long time, a lot of relationship theory thought 
oh, you know, I'm responsible for my consciousness, you're responsible for your consciousness, right. deal with it. Mm. But now actually science is proving that we're totally interconnected. And when he's anxious or stressed out, right. I'm a part of that. And my biology is feeling that too. And guess what? Our children are no different, mm -hmm. right? So our children are feeling our anxiety, our stress, our frustration. They're feeling when we're stuffing it down and sweeping it under the rug. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They can sense all of that. Mm -hmm. So truthfully, like transparency for us has been huge mm -hmm. and not taking things personally, like in a very tactical sense. Those two things, plus having really clear intentional agreements mm -hmm. on how we communicate. Like for instance, every Sunday, we do this like transparency talk where it's like anything mm -hmm. during the week that's come up okay. that we had a, a thought about or that you know we kind of were resentful about, we just bring it into the space. Mm -hmm. And how we do it is we start with an acknowledgement mm -hmm. and we say, hey, here's what I wanna acknowledge you for from this week. Now, here's what came up for me. And we make sure it's in responsible communication. Right. Like I made up the story that you, yes. you know, uh, my wounded self believes mm -hmm. or the frightened person, frightened part of my personality thinks that. Mm -hmm. And then he would just receive it and go, okay, great. I hear you. Awesome. Not taking it personally, but being an objective listener mm -hmm. so that we just have the space to clear all that crap that otherwise would just stack, 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 stack. Mm -hmm and mm -hmm. cause a lot of neurobiological frustration mm -hmm. <laughs> that the child can feel. Now, for those of you listening to this going, so you're saying I'm responsible for everything that, that my wife or boyfriend or whatever is experiencing? No. What we're saying is, is that we get to keep each other in mind. Yeah. We get mm -hmm. to protect each other's love, yeah. personality, mm -hmm. life. Like the same way that we care for our child, if we even yeah. did 20% of that for our partners, mm -hmm. the game would change. Yeah. And I think that, um, yeah, it's just really important. Yeah, and I wanna start by saying that uh, these, uh, you know, invisible secondary losses mm -hmm. are more catastrophic for teens um, and children than it is, than they are for adults. Mm -hmm. So when a, when, a, when a teen has a breakup um, and, you know, they, they spent time with that friend that, that, that they were in a relationship with and all of a sudden that person goes and rejects them. Yeah. Um, I would be very concerned if we didn't um, emphasize and validate and acknowledge the, the depths of loss that your mm -hmm. child is experiencing. Mm -hmm. um, I am going to uh, come across as dramatic in this part because I wanna make sure that uh, parents are aware that suicide is, um, is very present yeah. at this age, um, when there is a breakup, when there is bullying at school. Mm -hmm. I've had parents write to me um, the hard things about the suicide of their children. Mm -hmm. They didn't know, um, they were not aware of the losses, the bullying, the rejection, the abandonment their child was experiencing at school. Mm -hmm. um, these losses are so invisible that the child will do everything they can to appear normal. That's right. Or stronger. Or strong, or that everything is fine, that they have this social life. Um, that the, and, 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 and in um, the breakup conversation, um, m most parents would say, don't worry, sweetheart, um, you'll meet someone, there's plenty, you're young still. We, we say this, I have said these things, we all say those things. I have made that mistake as well. But for them, that is their whole world. Oh, yeah. That is everything to them. Mm -hmm. And I always say divorce mm -hmm. or separation or breakup is like death, but it's like the person is dead for us and alive for everyone else. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I've said this to a lot of people who have been divorced and separated and say, the person is supposed to be dead for you. Yeah. You're not allowed to have this person in your life, but right. you see them with that person and that person yeah. and that person, you're not allowed to go there, which is even worse mm -hmm. and more painful mm -hmm. than anything else. Talking about death, loss, and disappointment with your kids should not be avoided. In fact, it provides a wonderful opportunity to bond with your child. Your child is going through an emotional experience that is strange and even unsettling. Make sure you don't dismiss their experience. Validation is crucial at a time like this. Here 
here we are. We're at the end of our day. We're kind of like, we might be tired ourselves. Oh, and, we, and, and then we've got this intention, which is loving to create connection. What can we do? How much mm. can we actually influence on this? Mm. Now, the first thing, and we've been talking around this, is really ourselves. How are we coming into the moment? Mm. You know, have, have, we, have we settled our anxiety? Have we taken a little breath for ourselves? Mm. Have we reconnected with the reason we're doing this? Now, the mm. reason we're doing this is to create this mm. opening to create loving connection. So first, that's it. We can connect uh, with ourselves. Yeah. Second, we have some influence over our child and the state that they're in when they get to bed. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, from maybe as early as six o'clock in the evening, we're moving towards mm -hmm. sleep, yes. right? Yeah. Have we over energized and over stimulated them with some activities? Are they, are they on a sugar high? Um, you know, have we missed the window? Is it, is it nine o'clock at night and they're too late? And so, <laughs> yeah. so, so, you know, they're, they're not going to let go of, I want a story, but it's like, but it, but it, but, and you're like, you're almost too tired for a story. So yeah, right. we've got a little bit of influence over that, getting that sweet spot right for yeah. them. Mm -hmm. um, then we get some influence over the environment that they sleep in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, turning lights off, having a nightlife, maybe maybe it's it's putting a, a, a particular music on in the background that Cyrus is their sleep loves music. The salt lamps. Mm -hmm. The you know the really go. ambient like yeah. lighting. That's He's a shift a from going to the bright lights and the sun yeah. going down. He knows that when our yeah. ambient lighting comes on yeah. that we're getting prepared to Close out the day, right? Yeah. And and we we're, we're kind of tracking that that sunset process that you name yes. it. Like right. we're leading you through a transition. This is a transition. It's not like yeah. like awake asleep. Totally. <laughs> it's not a switch. So yeah. so we want to do the journey of the transition each mm -hmm. time. Um, and the fourth thing that you've got some control over is the content. Mm -hmm. It's like what is it that we're choosing to engage with at this time. Um, uh, we might add even the medium that the content is delivered on mm. these days, you know, whether you're choosing a, a hard copy book or whether you're choosing right. um, an, an electronic screen, the LCD lighting effect, yeah. it's a stimulant, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So we have to be aware that that stimulant is at odds with that transition journey that we're trying to create for the little ones. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, one thing we personally practice is we do shut down the screens if we do have them on. Towards the end Every of the now day. and again, Motown Magic gets left on a little bit late after his <laughs> bedtime. Yeah. And then when it comes time for the bedtime and saying goodnight to the toys and helping him helping turn the lights off, he's he I do notice that if the Motown Magic's gone a little bit late, yeah. he's doesn't want to say goodnight <laughs> as early. Yeah, and and I love that <laughs> that little example, saying goodnight to the toys, we right? Do, yes. yes. So there's a there's a, a little a uh, tribal belonging happening yes. um, mm -hmm. for Osiris in yes. in his community. His mm -hmm. community, yes. his environment That's has right. these characters in it. Mm -hmm. Name it to tame it, right? Name mm -hmm. your emotions to tame your emotions. So yeah. this is a very basic practice that you can do outside of the moment. Another thing that really is important is to create, is to we fuse everything together. We mm. fuse our feelings and our thoughts with our identity, right? Oh, yeah. And I'm always telling kids, you have a very strong light, <laughs> not force, <laughs> inside of you. You have a very strong light inside of you, an essence inside of you, strengths inside of you that have nothing to do the, with the experience you're going through. And they're like, okay, well, that sounds cool. What do I do about that? Mm. And I say, start to remove the words I'm or I am, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm anxious, right? Yeah. I am this, you're fusing what's mm. supposed to be a temporary experience. Remember, it's a message that's being sent to you. The emotion is a message and it's temporary. So mm. don't fuse it and create permanence around it. So what you can say is, I'm noticing I'm feeling worried mm -hmm. or I'm having the thought that this is happening. Yeah. This separation, this diffusion, right, in, in psychological terms, they call it cognitive diffusion, is simple to do yeah. and very powerful. You start to become an observer of your experience, something that happens in meditation, right? And 
these things that mm -hmm. sound, oh my goodness, this sounds so sophisticated, right? How can a kid mm -hmm. learn this? This mm -hmm. is the work that I do. I'm my, most of the people, the humans that I work with are little humans. Yeah. Yeah. I work with six to 10 year olds mm -hmm. and trust me, mm -hmm. they come into this world mindful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They are mindfulness teachers, mm -hmm. right? Whereas we might see them sometimes is distracted, they're not distracted. Mm -hmm. They are licking the crevice on the ground. <laughs> they are smelling <laughs> the flowers. They, yeah, try to take a walk with, yeah. with a little one and you yeah. will notice the amount of mindfulness that they have. Me. How do I raise a happy and successful child? How do I raise a healthy child? How do I raise someone who's self-actualized in their life? Well, one minute. How can you possibly teach a child or raise a child or create an environment for them to become those things if you haven't cracked that code for yourself mm. yet? Mm. The key mistake that we make is misunderstanding our role as mm -hmm. parents, just misunderstanding the job description. And I think the most elegant and eloquent, um, you know, kind of cohesive outline of this is Alison Gopnik's book, The Gardener and the Carpenter. Mm -hmm. And I won't do it justice, but what she outlines is the difference between being a gardener and a carpenter. Mm -hmm. And basically our, our kind of modem operandi of parenting in, in this culture is a carpenter role. A carpenter takes a chunk of raw wood mm -hmm. and has an end game in mind. He knows that this raw wood is now going to become a chair, right? And he's going to work and mold and carve and shape and nail and hammer out that wood, mm -hmm. sand it clean, yeah. smooth it, finish and put on the polishing layers until it looks exactly like the other three chairs he's just created, yes? Yeah. Yeah. This is the factory line parenting, right? Mm -hmm. And we all are products of the industrial revolution yeah. and industrial era, so we all think of many processes in terms of efficiency, productivity and lemons, right? Oh, this one's a lemon, this one came out wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. This creates a very kind of predetermined, yeah. right, one size fits all dogmatic approach to mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Now, it's wonderful when it comes to chairs. Unfortunately, it just doesn't work when it comes to right. humans. Yes. <laughs> we want our chairs to be flawless. Yeah. But humans are complex. They're complex organisms, complex systems. And there are many different factors that go into what makes a human quote unquote successful. Right. And the biggest factor, in my opinion, which we're missing is self definition of success. Mm. What does it mean to be successful for you? What yeah. does your child view as successful, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think misunderstanding our role as a factory line worker or a carpenter who's working on a product, and if that product doesn't look exactly the same as we've predetermined it to look, or as the spec, right? Then we have a lemon, right? Then we need to medicate that person or put that person in therapy and all sorts of tutoring yeah. and shape them and prod them until oh, we can fit them into the box. Well, this is super stressful. <laughs> Yes. How, like, how, how do we overcome that? Is it by being the gardener, of which I'm exactly. super curious to hear this because I haven't read yes. this book, which sounds amazing, it's but amazing. now I want to know about the gardener. <laughs> so exactly. So the opposite of the carpenter in this context is the gardener. Now, the gardener knows that they don't create the rose. Yes, they don't right. create the. They might plant the seed. Uh, OK, mm -hmm. but then the gardener's whole job is to create an environment with which the seed can grow. OK, the That's rose, the one. gardener realizes that the rose is no less a rose in its seed form as it, in, it, it, as it is in its sapling form, as it is in its full blossom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it always has the DNA of the rose. Its rosiness mm -hmm. is always within it. Yes. The gardener's job is to offer and, and to provide the needs, the basic needs, mm -hmm. really basic needs, okay? This does not include Montessori manipulatives, no, it's like although the I love them. The, <laughs> exactly. The elements. What does a gardener do? Yeah. He waters, he makes sure that they're exposed to sunshine, that the soil is nutrient rich, mm -hmm. and he might ward off predators, right? He might make sure that there's no, you know, nasty weeds around, etc. Yeah. Yeah. right? So there's a little sure. bit of protection, mm -hmm. not overprotection, and then he lets be. And then he allows that rose to blossom and he just enjoys it. So the difference between the carp carpenter and the gardener in this case is really the difference of, am I doing, am I controlling, am I shaping, molding, creating an image that I have predetermined? Or am I just kind of clearing the soil, providing the water, letting the sun shine and, and sitting in a deck chair, you know, and, yeah. and enjoying the fruits of, of, of nature's labor. Yeah. Wow.